Hi, this is Lori, and welcome to my series on the Pico W. In the next two episodes, we're going to be creating a game that I call Pymon. It's a memory game that we'll build with our Pico W. Let's get started. Here's the layout of our breadboard for our Pymon game. We'll use our Pico W here, and we'll have a passive buzzer, four buttons, and four LEDs. These buttons um, are actually colored red, green, blue, and yellow um, with the real buttons that I'm using. And so this will be a pair, a red LED with a red button, a green LED with a green button, and so forth. Um, so that's the layout. The buttons will use pull down resistors in the code. So we have them connected into power on one side and back to our Pico on the other. And then the other one, uh, the other lead you see here, wire, is for our LED that goes with that button. So it um, might look a little complicated, but uh, if you get it all set up, it, it's really not too bad to set up this uh, circuit that we need to do our Pymon game. So Pymon will be a breadboard-based game to test our short-term memory. In my version of the game, uh, the game creates a sequence of the colored uh, lights and tones, and you need to repeat the sequence by pressing those colored buttons in the correct order. The sequence starts with just one color slash tone, and uh, you need to enter that back after it plays it. You press and enter that same color and tone, and then you go to the next step, and the game adds one more color and tone to the first one and it plays them for you, and then you need to enter that same sequence back, and it continues to add one on until it gets to um, the skill level that you've chosen, which will indicate how long the sequence is that you need to repeat to win the game. Um, right now, uh, I have a couple of versions of the game, one where it's just set to eight, which I think most people can do, and then it, uh, one version that has multiple skill levels and you can choose which skill level you want at the start. As I've done in several episodes where we've done a multi-episode project, I think it's nice to see um, what we're going to have at the end of these two episodes in terms of our game. So I'll do a little demo of the Paimon game and I think it'll also solidify what we're trying to do with the game. All right, so I've uh, got this up here running, and uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. And you can see it comes to the screen, and it says, Welcome to Paimon. Um, enter the skill level that you want, and I've included a demo mode where we only need to repeat four uh, colors in the sequence to, to win the game. Uh, so otherwise, it could take a little while to play uh, the game. So type in a four, and it says, Get ready. And so you might have seen the yellow light come on, and hopefully you heard the uh, sound. So I'll repeat it. Okay, it's three. And you can see I won. Um, so that's great. Let's just uh, let's do it one more time and then let's uh, purposely um, lose the game just to see what happens when we do that. I'll get the first one right, but I'll miss the first, second one. Gives us a long buzzer to let us know we lost the game. So that's what we're shooting for at the end of the second episode. The Paimon game is fairly simple in the concept of how it operates, but there are several programming tasks that we'll need to do to get this game going. Um, and when I started thinking about this project, I was really interested in doing it because I could tell that I would learn a lot about MicroPython as I put it together and how to get the game to work the way I wanted it to. Well, one of the first things um, about Pymon is not only do you see visually the light show up, but you also hear the tone at the same time, and that's a key component to being able to remember uh, the sequence. Now, if you go and look up uh, from a game similar to Paimon, it rhymes with Paimon, 
um, you'll see the different tones that have been used. And in fact, um, you get multiple answers when you ask what are the um, tones that are used for the different colors. I settled on, on these four. So red, green, blue, and yellow. And then here are the notes that will play. D sharp in the four octave, which has 311 hertz to make that, uh, make that tone. And similarly, you can see green, blue, and yellow. Now the nice thing is uh, you can change this in the code if you'd prefer a different uh, set of sounds. Next up, we'll have to figure out how to create a random sequence. Uh, the, for the user to have to come back and play for us. And I chose to just create a random sequence of the numbers 1 through 4, where uh, 1 will represent red, 2 will represent green, uh, 3 for blue, and 4 for yellow. And so that's how I decided to do it. You could do it a lot of different ways. Uh, then we'll need to come up with a way to light that sequence and play the appropriate tone for each color in our random sequence at the same time. Then we're going to need to develop a way for the user to input their color tone sequence back to us and capture that as they press the buttons. And not only when they press the button should the light come on, but they should also hear the same tone so that they can use that to help their memory uh, get the sequence right. Then we'll need to check and see, did they repeat the same sequence that the game played for them? and of course then decide whether they've either lost the game or they've entered the entire sequence correctly and won. All right, when you have a complicated circuit like this, it's good to go ahead and test some of your components, make sure they're working correctly. So we're gonna test the buzzer and the LEDs and make sure they're lit up right and connected to the right pins that we expect. So that's building block number one. We'll import uh, the pin, I2C, pulse width modulation, and a couple of functions from the uTime library for sleeping. We'll set up the buzzer as a pulse width modulation object, and we'll set up the four uh, LEDs. Then to use the buzzer, just a quick reminder, we set the frequency we want, then we run it at a duty cycle of 50%, which is a number between 0 and 65, 535, so that's halfway. We'll hold the note for half a second by sleeping, and then we'll turn the duty cycle back to zero um, to create this, to turn it off. And then for the LEDs, we'll just uh, turn them on and off in order just to see, make sure we have them hooked up. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Yeah, looks like it worked pretty well. So we have those things all set up. On to the next program. All right, so now we're ready to uh, create a random sequence uh, one through four, and then we're going to want to be able to light the sequence and play the tone um, for the sequence. So that's our goal with this program, and this is probably where we'll end um, episode number one. Uh, so we'll set everything up, and we'll also need uh, to import a rand int function from the random library to do the to do the random sequence. We'll set up our buzzer and LEDs as before. Now we're going to use a function that I first introduced in the Passive Buzzer Jukebox episodes to play tones. You saw when we did the test component, there's several steps in uh, playing a tone on our Passive Buzzer, so we'll put that all in one function and make it neat and tidy. Uh, so that's what this tone function will do. You tell it what pin you're looking at, what frequency you want, and how long you want to hold the note. So that's what this does. Then we'll make a function to play the sequence itself. So um, you can see here, we'll say what pin is the buzzer on. Here's the sequence that we're going to give it. It's going to be a list of uh, one through four. Then uh, how much of the sequence do we want to play? Do we want to play all of the sequence or just a part of it? Because as you saw when we demoed the game, sometimes we only play the first note, then the, the first two notes, then the first three. So this is how you can control um, how much of the sequence you want to play at this time, and then for how long you want to play each note. And so it'll go through the sequence up to the number you gave, and uh, go ahead and light the LEDs, and then uh, play the tone, and then turn them uh, off briefly so uh, you get kind of a, 
uh, separation from the next uh, tone. So you sleep just a little bit to make that happen. Now you can see in here it says button dictionary. So it's looking up into the button dictionary to see um, which uh, light should be turned on. So it actually kind of attempts to turn on all the lights, but when you, you'll see when you look at the button dictionary, only one of these will be turned on and the others will all be set to off. So we'll go down and look at that. Here's the button dictionary. So I create a little dictionary for the buttons. Uh, one, two, three, four. So for the red, green, blue, and yellow. Here's the frequencies that we'll use for the tone. So this is a place where you could change that if you wanted to. And then you can see it's just a little list. So when it's button one, which would be red, the first one will be on and the other three will be off and so forth. So just a little matrix there to uh, handle all the lighting uh, somewhat efficiently. So that's the button dictionary. So this is really a key um, function that we'll use, this play sequence function. Um, there we go. Okay, so next we have to uh, uh, create the random sequence. So we'll uh, pre-set up a game sequence. So this will be the one that the game has in hand. We'll tell it how long we want the sequence to be. So for right now, we're just hard coding in eight. And then here you can see we're going through all the positions in a game sequence and we're appending on a random number between one and four. So actually that turns out to not be uh, terribly hard to do. And we'll print that out just so we can take a look at what the sequence was that we generated. Then we're going to go ahead and play the whole sequence all the way through. So you can see we're saying here's the pin to use, here's our sequence. We want you to print to play all of it, all eight notes and for um, half a second. And then here is how we can play the sequence, um, you know, bit by bit, the first one, the second one. So we'll just do it in a little loop where we'll increment through how much of the sequence we want to play. All right, so uh, let's give this a go. So there you go, you can see the sequence. Now it's the first one, first and second, and this is really a, a, a key concept that we'll need to make the game work. One more. And if you followed along, you can see it, it played the sequence that it randomly generated. So I think we've got the tools we need to play the sequence for the user. And in part two, we're going to need to figure out how to capture the user's input as they press the buttons back to, re to uh, replicate the sequence that the game played for them. And then we'll need to compare uh, the game sequence to the player sequence and then, you know, fill out our game so that it has some nice uh, features and uh, can decide when it's we won or lost and allow us to choose uh, some skill levels and things like that. Well, I hope you'll join me for part two and thanks for watching.